All right, gang, Mass 6610. I want to uh, demonstrate something for you. Uh, so I have this Lesson 1 SAT, and I can, of course, uh, just drag that right there. Uh, make sure you've got just, you know, one quotation mark on each side. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. So I now have data, uh, this data set into um, R. And I want to attach it, and I want to take a look at it. All right. So if you'll notice, uh, this data set isn't in the format that we need. Now, could we run an independent samples t-test like this? Yes, we could. But preparing you for bigger, better stuff, uh, specifically getting into multivariate data analysis, we don't need these uh, uh, data points partitioned over, in this case, gender. What I need to be able to see is that on each particular line, all of the information is specific to one case. Now, cases can be people, they can be students, they can be teachers, they could be trees, cats, dogs, uh, they could be school districts. Just depending on the nature of the study, uh, we read left to right, uh, specific to one person, and we read up and down. Those are the variables. Uh, it turns out in, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to call this data uh, 2. turns out that there's a f uh, feature in R called the stack function, and I can just perform stack uh, on data and rename it as data 2, so it's a new data frame, and uh, attach it and life is good, right? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, what happens is we get the data set in the format that we want. In other words, on the first line, I find out that this person is registered, uh, uh, identified as female, and the value is 529, and these are GRE scores. So this would be gender, this would be um, um, a GRE score, which, which is a little bit annoying, and I, I may get it into that later. But what's most annoying is, even though I've attached my data set, I have eight uh, lines down there that I don't need. And it's going to cause problems because, for example, if I come in and calculate the mean for uh, values, it's going to give me no can do because it can't add 503 plus 320 plus 380 plus all these NAs. So uh, there's actually a solution. Uh, so what I want to do now is create a new data frame. I'm just going to call it data2. I think I called the other one data2, didn't I? Uh, yeah, so let's call this one data3. And it's, This is a little more cumbersome, if you will. Uh, when you're teaching it, demonstrating it, but when you're doing it, 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 it uh, happens uh, very quickly. All right, so what I want to do is I want to use a command that allows me to take a previous data set, an existing data set, and I name it, and then I use uh, the uh, braces, and then I go minus C. Now, I tell you what, I don't want to do it that way. Uh, I take that back. That That's just going to cause... There's another way that it just hit me. I can do this. Uh, let's just do D, uh, NA omit for data 2. So what that's going to do is that's going to come in and everywhere it sees an NA, which is essentially missing data in R, it's going to omit that from data 2 and store that in data 3. So now I can do attach data 3. And you can see that we have the data set as we need it. And if I want to find the mean for uh, values, I can do that. Now, I don't know about you, but I would rather for the data set to have the names here. I would rather for that to be GRE and for that to be gender. Uh, it turns out that there's an easy fix to that. <laughs> it's just called fix. So what will happen when I uh, implement fixed data 3 is it opens it up uh, kind of in Excel format, I don't know, and it allows me to come in and change the values. Close it down. Let's 
going to give me a big old warning like I've done something wrong, but you can see data three now has GRE and gender as the variables. So this allows me to replicate what we've done previously, uh, t-test, uh, GRE over gender, um, fair equal, equal false. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, I guess it's going to require me to attach data three. Yeah, interesting. I didn't I didn't realize that uh, that you had to do that. So uh, you can see that we uh, have statistical significance at the 0.05 level. Uh, it's easy to see that uh, males scored higher. So we do have statistical significance, and again we. Uh, performed an unpooled t-test uh, and that's demonstrated by the degrees of freedom being a non-integer. Now again I don't think I've done this yet if I run a pooled t-test all I have to do is say variance is equal true and you'll see that I get uh, a little bit more power. You'll notice that the degrees of freedom uh, are an integer. Uh, you'll see that my test statistic increased a little bit, therefore my p-value decreased, so holding everything else constant. Uh, that means uh, that we have more power for assuming equal variances. Now if I want to come in and actually look at the variances, uh, so I can do by uh, GRE over gender and look at variance and I can see that the variance for male appears to be quite a bit larger than for females. I, I can't conclude uh, that across the population that the, 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 the variances are, unless I run uh, statistically speaking and generalizing to the population, if I run um, Levine or Bartlett, but just by eyeballing the variances for the samples uh, it appears to me that we would probably conclude that we do not have equal variances from the populations from which we drew uh, the sample. All right, so that's all I've got uh, in this uh, video. I uh, wanted to keep it short, but I got uh, kind of uh, on a little bit of a tangent. Uh, only two videos remaining. Um, I think I'll, at least I think I can get uh, in two videos, uh, dependent samples t-test and chi-square. All right, take care.